everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany Beeston from Beauty and the Beastons and every single Sunday I put up a motivating video to get you ready for the week ahead. I also upload every single Tuesday and we upload three times a week on our family channel, Beeston Family Vibes, so lots of uploads. Today's video is one of my favorite videos to make and one of my favorite videos to watch and that is a what's for dinner. This is real life, what we ate every single night this week and I hope that it just gives you some motivation. It's nothing crazy. Um, I just want to show everybody that you can cook at home and make good recipes, not spend a ton of money, and not have to like rack your brain for ideas. You don't have to be on Pinterest for 10 hours trying to find meals for the week. So before we get into it, I just want to say, if you do make any of these recipes, please tag me on Instagram at t.beaston. I love sharing your recipes, and I also love seeing the twists that you guys put on them. But let's get right into this video. Hey guys, so the first recipe that we're making is beef stew. Something I didn't think I'd hear myself say because I'm not like a big fan of beef. However, Everly, the baby in my stomach, if you're new here, is wanting beef stew and I just had to have it. So this is how we are making it tonight. Let's pray it turns out good. Um, if I ever make a cookbook, the title will be Let's Pray It Tastes Good. But anyway, let's get into it. Um, seems incredibly easy and hard to mess up, so let's hope that's true. Okay, so you're gonna need a packet of beef stew seasoning, and what's really exciting for me is that they always usually contain gluten. However, this one is organic and it's gluten-free. And then you're going to need your stew meat. I'm just going based on the recipe from this. Um, it says two pounds, but I got a little over a pound. It also calls for cut up potatoes and carrots, but I'm just using small potatoes and then little um, baby carrots a can of diced tomatoes, and then one onion. It also calls for two cups of water, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and use chicken broth just to give it some extra flavor. So the first thing I'm doing is cutting this massive onion. I don't mind that it's so big, because I'm sure I'll just give it a lot of really good flavor. Onions are cut up. I have two cups of chicken broth instead of the two cups of water, and I'm just gonna mix that packet of seasoning right into there. All right, so I'm not following directions. What else is new? I'm putting the onions in with some olive oil first, and I'm gonna let them kinda cook just a little bit. Some salt on them. There's that beautiful sound I was looking for. Let them sweat it out for a second. Those are looking good. Now I'm just gonna scoot them over to the side and put my beef in for a second. A little bit more oil, it's looking a little dry. It just gives everything more flavor. So you could absolutely just throw everything in at one time, like the package says. I just feel you get more flavoring this way. Throwing in some potatoes and our carrots. Now our seasoning and chicken broth. Oh my gosh, it smells so good like already. How is that possible? I'm gonna put this in and then put our um, petite diced tomatoes in and then give everything a good stir and let it do its thing for two hours. You could totally do this in the Instant Pot and the Crock Pot, um, but I need this done a little bit uh, faster and I want it to smell up the whole house with those yummy, delicious smells. Tomatoes. And then since I can't drink wine, I'm gonna cook with some wine, put a little bit of red wine in there because why not? Give everything a good stir. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I hope it tastes good because this has been a craving of mine. It's like good comfort food. Thank you for not breaking. 
All right, so I'm just gonna cover that and let the magic happen. I'm gonna put it on medium heat for two hours and I'll check on it here and there and give it a good stir. Oh my gosh, I just tried a piece of the beef to make sure it was nice and tender. And oh my goodness, it is so amazing. Can't wait to eat this. I doubt the kids will eat it, but I can eat it. Okay, so today is a tried and true crock pot meal that everybody loves and it's so insanely easy. It's a dump and go meal and the whole family will eat it. So we are making chicken tacos today. So I'm just gonna use one pack of boneless skinless chicken thighs and then just one singular chicken breast because it'll just give it all a good texture and it'll be the perfect amount for our family. Chicken is in, I did spray yeah. the crock pot with just like some cooking spray. I'm gonna do one packet of taco seasoning. Pour that in, so incredibly easy. I like to put it right over the chicken so it gives the chicken the most flavor. And then I'm doing one jar of salsa. And this is just a 16 ounce jar of Southwest mild salsa. Pour that over. And then I'm gonna put it on high for four hours and that's literally it. All right, it's time to shred these tacos. They look perfectly done. You want taco? <laughs> That's Ella. That looks like before we shred it. So we got our chicken tacos, lettuce, some guac and some sour cream, and then we always toast our corn tortillas just a little bit. All right guys, so tonight is all about comfort food that I'm craving, and we are making a delicious sweet turkey chili, some cornbread, actually making them into corn muffins, and butternut squash mac and cheese. The combination together is just so good. So I have my oven preheating. I got all of my ingredients out for my cornbread. This is the best gluten-free cornbread, by the way. Um, I have my water with some pink salt in it. I'm gonna boil that when I'm ready for the pasta. First thing I'm gonna do is cut up um, my onion and garlic, but I wanted to show you the cans that I'm using. So I just have two cans of chili beans, a can of um, diced tomatoes, a larger can of crushed tomatoes, and then this is not for the chili. This is for our um, butternut squash mac and cheese, but these are the canned items that I use. I'm just gonna throw in my rinsed beans and then my tomatoes just to get all of this stuff out of the way first. I just used one yellow onion. I used actually less because I got the most massive onions from Costco, so I didn't use all of it, but yellow onion, some salt, some olive oil, and I'm gonna get started now on the cornbread. So I got my mix. I'm just putting in one cup of oat milk. Uh, you can use whatever kind of milk you want. One third cup of vegetable oil, and then one fourth cup of applesauce, and that's because Ella can't have egg. So I use one fourth cup of applesauce per one egg, and this only calls for one egg. Back over here. These are looking good. I'm gonna add two garlic cloves now, saute it for a second, 
and then add my turkey. Every time I do this. Okay, now I'm just gonna add some pepper, some salt. I like to add lots of chili powder and I don't I don't measure my spices but I always love how my chili comes out and I use a lot of chili powder. It smells like heaven in here already. Now that that's mixed in pretty nicely, I'm adding some coconut sugar, and I usually use brown sugar, um, but this is like a little bit healthier, and also I know a lot of places are out, out of brown sugar, so this is a good substitute. I'm not putting like um, red pepper flakes in or anything like that, um, just because I'm trying to keep it pretty mild. Carter will eat this. Um, I don't think that Tanner and Ella will, um, but Sometimes I crave spicy and sometimes I don't. Today I don't want like super spicy. So I'm just gonna let this brown up some more before I add it to the crock pot. Just so wanna make sure everything's cooked through since I'm not really like keeping the crock pot on for a while. Basically just using the crock pot for, um, to keep it warm while Chris is at the vet. So when he comes back from the vet, dinner will be all ready. So let's go let this brown for a second and put in our corn muffins. All right, now the corn muffins are in. We're adding the turkey to the beans and tomatoes. All right, so now I'm boiling some water for our butternut squash. Okay, these are perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. Corn muffins are done. Chili is pretty much done, keeping it warm until Chris gets home. And now I'm boiling some water, not boiling yet, for our butternut squash mac and cheese. All right, finally our water is boiling. This is the penne I'm using, I love this kind. I'm gonna use the whole box, by the way. If we have leftovers, they're so good the next day too. Don't even think about it, pasta. Let's have one video without you boiling over. So I basically do this like you would do mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna put that butternut squash back in, the same pan I just drained the pasta from. 
adding some butter. All of this you can do as per preference, like I always say. I may need to add more later, I don't know, but first I'm just gonna melt this and kinda like smush this down. Mommy, yes, sweetheart? A troll. Be careful, it gets hot up here, right? What's that, a sword? Yeah. Oh. Here's your water. Okay, so this is a real life cooking video, if I didn't mention that. So real life, what's for dinner? This is all nice and mashed up. I'm just using some heavy cream that I had left over from my Alfredo. Stir it. And then we're gonna add some cheese. You wanna do that? Okay, careful. Hi. Good job, sweetie. You cooking? You're doing so good. Gotta be careful though, because the pan is hot, right? Hot. Okay, now I'm just adding some cheese. You can use whatever cheese you want. I use Mexican cheese because we always have this massive bag of it. Just gonna stir this around and then I'll add some to the top. Hold on, sweetheart. So good already. What, honey? Now I'm just gonna add some oat milk because I don't want to add more heavy cream. You want to have oatmeal for dinner? Yeah. No way. You had oatmeal for breakfast. Okay, let me get the oat milk. Again, use when I refer to like milks and heavy creams and stuff, just use whatever kind of milk your family likes. Ella's allergic to almonds, so I can't use almond milk. Um, I wouldn't mind using coconut milk either. That's another one I really like. But today I'm using oat milk. Okay, that looks really good. I'm gonna add in my pasta, Let's give it some salt and pepper, and then put it into a baking dish. Yum, oh, that cheesy goodness. So I just baked that for about like 20 minutes on 350 and then I broiled it on 550 for like one minute at the end. But just be careful because every oven is different and you can totally ruin your food when you do broil by just like a little bit of that crispy top. Ellie, go for the corn muffin first. What do you think? Tanner, how's your gourmet meal? Hey guys, so tonight's dinner is super, super easy. I set myself up for success by prepping my Brussels sprouts ahead of time so they're already chopped. Um, I'm sure you already saw that in my um, ingredient prep and grocery haul video, but we are making the easiest and healthiest dinner ever, which is good because we've just had a long day today. I had my Brussels sprouts prepped um, and then I got these from Costco and we love the salmon we get from Costco. Oh, thank you so much, honey. You're so sweet. Um, but this is marinated wild Alaskan salmon and just has um, some really good seasonings on it. Same in these. You guys are stinkers. You're trying to tickle me. Um, but anyway, real life here. Um, these potatoes are just cooked in the avocado oil and it's red potatoes, yellow potatoes, and purple potatoes um, with just like some salt and pepper. So all healthy things. And that's how they come. We're gonna put everything in the oven. We're putting the salmon in the oven first because that takes the longest, and then we're gonna go ahead and throw these two in. Salmon's in the oven. I'm just gonna put my Brussels sprouts on here. I'm gonna put my Brussels sprouts on here. I'm gonna go ahead and add some oil. 
some salt, and some pepper. Okay, the salmon has um, about 18 minutes left, so I just went ahead and threw in our potatoes and our Brussels sprouts. Okay, everything is done, and I'm just adding a little bit of pure maple syrup to the Brussels sprouts, and it makes it so good. Just a tiny bit, I'm gonna mix it. And dinner is served. That was so easy and fast. Hello again, and welcome to a very easy dinner. Um, what makes it even easier is that Chris forgot the chicken in the checkout line, but I'm not mad about it because I wasn't gonna eat it anyway. Um, let me show you what we're having for dinner tonight. It is a Friday night, it is absolutely beautiful outside, and I'm perfectly happy with this dinner, and I'm sure the kids are too. The only person who's probably not that happy about this dinner is Chris, because he was looking forward to his kebabs that I was gonna make. So we have some corn on the cob, which who doesn't love corn on the cob? Um, these are insanely easy. I'm not saying that it's uh, really healthy to eat these microwaved potatoes, but they're really good and we need a quick, easy meal. Um, we got some hot dog buns. These are gluten-free. Um, and I think they're egg-free as well. Yeah, they're egg-free too. And then these hot dogs. So we usually get a different brand of hot dogs, but they didn't have them, so we got these. And that's it, so we're gonna go ahead and throw the corn on the grill and the hot dogs on the grill, these in the microwave, and we do our corn a special way, so I will show you that at the end. All right, so the first thing I do is just wrap all of the corn in foil. I know that, um, you know, foil is not the best to cook with, but we have to do our corn like this on the grill. But I'm gonna throw these on the grill now since it'll take the longest, and then we'll do the hot dogs at the end. Also, I'm not saying I'm Bobby Flay or anything because I'm not, but um, especially now, just throwing hot dogs and corn on the cob on, but don't be afraid to use the grill, ladies. I know a lot of people are intimidated by it, but there's really no reason to be. All you do is turn the propane on and then turn the switches on. It's so easy. If you're using um, that excuse to make your spouse cook, that's absolutely fine. Stay being afraid of the grill, but let's go put this stuff on. And also, I did catch the grill on fire like two weeks ago with corn on the cob, so let's hope I don't do that again. So the corn has been on for about 15 minutes and I just added my hot dogs onto our little grill mat. The corn looks perfect. I'd say I did it for about 20 minutes. I turned the grill off and I'm just gonna put the buns on for a minute, it's still super hot. So these are like perfectly done. The kids will just have to pick around my burnt pieces, but I actually really like the more cooked pieces. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these off the cob. The kids don't like to eat them on the cob, which is crazy, because that's how I grew up eating them. Um, but I'm gonna cut them off and season them. So I did a little bit of butter, now some pepper, just a little bit because of the kids and we can, me and Chris will add our own. Some salt. And then some all shuck seasoning. If you have ever been to Music Fest in Bethlehem, PA, they make the best corn and this is their seasoning. Just adding a little bit because it can get spicy. If they sell it online, I'll look. If they sell it online, I'll put the link, but it's so good on corn. Also, side note, 
if you have a dog, keep the corn cobs away from them. One time Brookie went through our garbage can before we had our island and everything, before we had our kitchen remodel, and took the cobs out, and we literally had to get them surgically removed or he would have died because their bellies cannot process the actual cob part, so be careful with that. And this delicious gourmet dinner is served. Mm -mm. Oh, and also, it's good. Mm -mm. Ella, look at mommy. While I was cooking, Ella got into my mascara. I'm pretty proud that she knew to put on her eye, though. That's she a plus. Mike Tyson look. <laughs> so good? Okay, good. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And on Tuesday, I will see you for a day in the life video. I'm taking, with you, taking you with me this Monday to my ultrasound at the hospital where I have to go by myself. Um, it'll be my 12 week ultrasound. Um, so I'm just happy to take you along with me and pretty much just show you what life is like right now being pregnant. But anyway, don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you Tuesday. i